welcome back i'm tedward and today we're driving a muscle car you guys have been asking for muscle cars and it's been actually very difficult to find american muscle cars but this is a 1981 pontiac firebird trans am it's got the ws6 package so it's got beefy sway bars and four wheel disc brakes that's kind of a big deal at the time but in 1981 this car came with, I think, a 301 or a 305, depending on the transmission you opted for, and it only had 145 horsepower. These were slow, except this one is not. This one has a small block Chevy 350 cubic inch crate motor with a mild cam, makes about 400 horsepower. It's mated to a Borg Warner T10 four speed, and my goodness, is it fun to drive. It's a little floaty though. Let's get it started because it's all motor. When we jump in, we first gotta recognize the old school GM setup. There were always two keys, one for the locks, one for the ignition. So we go in the ignition and the car, to get the key out, the car has to be in reverse. That's actually a column lockout. So we can flip this, pull it out of reverse, see if she'll start for us. Oh yes. We've got a four barrel quadrajet carburetor and it's got little primaries. So, you know, you, it doesn't give you a lot under a tiny bit of throttle, but when you open it up, this thing will spin the rear tires nicely. Let me show you under the hood because that's where all the magic happens. This is definitely the kind of vehicle that says, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not gonna fact check this. I'm pretty sure this was the car that Rob Corddry's character in Hot Tub Time Machine tried to kill himself in in the garage. And yes, to open the hood, this is actually under here. Oh, there we go. That's a beautiful sight. And the motor's set pretty far back. This is a nice setup for weight and balance, I would assume. You can tell they put a lot of love into this engine because they did aluminum heads and an aluminum intake. So this thing's actually really well sorted. That's why it sounds so great. Unfortunately, the original owner who bought this as a high school graduation gift to himself, I guess he was just tasteless because he didn't go with T-tops and a big Firebird on the hood. And I gotta say, I'm a big Archer fan. And as much as I love Smokey and the Bandit, I think the Smokey and the Bandit episodes in Archer with the blocker car, those are my favorite. And just to make this even weirder, fuel, there we go. Okay, you wanna get into that trunk. There's a key, up she goes. I've gotta get nice up and close to this steering wheel just because this clutch is actually pretty far. I mean, my, my leg is almost extended, but you know, I guess that's an okay driving position. Let's put our seatbelt on. I'm sure nobody used seatbelts in Trans Ams in 1981, but that's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna defy those people. Oh, please don't let me die in this car. secondary is like VTAC. <laughs> you get up to a certain point and instead of changing cam timing, you're just adding a ton of fuel and the car is ready to go. It lurches to life. It's a very full body experience getting into it though because there's a lot of motion happening. I mean, you're really, your whole body is involved in driving a car like this because the gearbox isn't doing you any favors and the, there's so much suspension play, you know, in body roll that everything's happening at once. You've got to center yourself and really focus on where you're going and steer where you want it to go. This thing's quick. This thing's like actually quick. This is a, a fast car. I mean, maybe you put it up next to something modern. It's not going to be fast, fast, but I think because of how much involvement you are as a driver, it feels fast. It feels like a lot's happening at once, and it's an entertaining experience. The 
first thing you notice when you're driving this car is just that the front end wanders just a little bit. Now that's a combination of kind of old school suspension and steering design and the fact that we've got big, big sidewall on this thing. Does it sound good? It's fast steering rack. It's like a pretty fast steering rack. I'm shocked that you don't need that much lock on it. This must have felt really sporty in 1981. Tons of low end torque, even though we're only at a four speed. I mean, it's, it's pretty happy up here on the highway. It's funny too because regulation only allowed for an 85 mile an hour speedometer. So it looks like we're at the top of this speedo when we're going 70 miles an hour. The 80s were a weird time. I'm not going to do a big brake test just because I don't want to go up in a cloud of smoke but they do feel positive. This is a land before ABS, that's for sure. You know, 1981, not a great time for muscle cars. Everything kind of died after 72 because that's when EPA emissions started changing and uh, we really weren't allowed to do the things we used to do in the, in the 60s. Hard to heel toe, all right. That was an unsuccessful attempt, but trolling around, it's not bad to drive. So when you get the revs up a little bit and you hit it, it really jumps to life and it just dumps fuel into that carburetor. If we were to hit it below, let's say 3000 RPM, you get the dreaded Quadra Bog because it's a Quadra Jet carburetor. And if you start dumping that much fuel in it without the revs, it's just gonna bog down. We're not gonna do that. We wanna be nice to it today. I gotta say, when you think about smoking the Bandit and all the stunt drivers who are driving those cars, you will have a heck of a lot of respect for them after you drive one in real life. Not because it's hard to drive, but just because to place this car so precisely, it's actually not a simple thing to do. But it does handle well. You've got this low end torque to play with. Steering is very light. Almost too light, but nice around town. It's actually very relaxing to drive. But this gearbox, while it's nice and fun to play with, it doesn't want you to just suggest to go into a gear. You've got to really grab it by the scrub and tell it what you want. Got some open road. Let's see what she does like first through third. She scoots. It's incredible watching the speedometer just jump to life because I mean. It's just going zero to 80, which is not a hard thing to do with this car, with this engine swap. I can definitely see how a kid in the 80s can get themselves in trouble with something like this. But honestly, it's more of a 70s car based on the motor. But seriously, what a blast. I mean, you see a straight line and all you want to do is roll into it. Open those secondaries and listen to it sing. You know, there's a lot of body roll, but it's not bad. It's 
obviously more about the power than the actual handling characteristics, but if you get used to the steering, then you, you can drive this car. It, it, it's very confidence inspiring, actually. Oddly enough, I think the more I have this car, the more I, I can bond with it, the more I understand it. I think the trouble though, is just that I'm not used to muscle cars. This isn't my territory. So for me, I'm used to German cars, you know, German, Italian cars, they're precision machines. This thing has a lot of character and it doesn't share much of it with those vehicles. What I don't like about the automotive community sometimes is we put ourselves in these camps. You know, I'm a BMW guy, I'm a Camaro guy, I'm a Ford guy, I'm a truck guy. Like, why can't we, why, I, I don't want to sound too cheesy though, why can't we all get along? But like, there are amazing things to glean from every version of those experiences. And maybe, maybe yes, you prefer one over the other. Maybe there's some you really just detest. I have so much fun driving a variety of cars whether they're old Ferraris, Caterhams, Lotuses, or muscle cars now. I mean, this is what I would really like to be doing for the rest of my life is just driving, comparing, and exploiting the strengths and revealing the weaknesses of all of our favorite cars historically and in present day. So if I were to buy one of these today, I would, I would have a blast driving it, by the way. I do want a muscle car in my life, whether it's a Camaro or a Trans Am or something, but what I would probably do is try to dial in that front suspension and the steering a little bit, just because that's that's the limiting, you know, limiting factor on a lot of these muscle cars. Because this particular motor doesn't have a very aggressive cam, it has a mild cam in it. I think it's nice for just kind of dawdling around and getting into it. Because the problem is when you put a really steep cam in these cars, the drivability just goes way down. They sound fantastic and idle as they chop along. It just makes it difficult to actually drive and you know you do that thing where you're trying to pull away slowly you've got to give it a heap of revs just to get it out of its own way and then you're laying a big strip of rubber which can be fun it is fun but it's not exactly ideal if you're like pulling away from a stoplight in front of a cop and you know trying to get away smoothly let's give her one more second gear rip before we put it away We'll get past the children, you know, we want to be good kids. It's all about respecting the drive and choosing your battles. Oh, I love it. So that's the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, guys, with a very appropriate engine swap. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you want this very car, it's for sale. It's gonna be up on Bring a Trailer, I think, but uh, inquire within, I suppose. Don't forget to respect the drive, no matter what you're driving. And, oh my goodness, I'm having a good day. This is a fun day. Kinda of wish it had T-tops. You know what, it's fine. It's classier this way. I think I'd have to wear a cutoff T-shirt. Gotta have the, 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 the Firebird on the hood. Maybe I just have a mustache. I don't know. I'll see you guys in the next one. You'd definitely be the coolest guy in high school if you had one of these.